Welcome to Trains 21. In addition to this YouTube channel, you can also find us online at trains21.org and trains21.com. The Reading and Northern's Kaiser Valley Industrial Track, or what I like to call their back track, is a piece of ex-Lackawanna Railroad that once connected to what is today Norfolk Southern's Sunbury Line at a spot called Cayuga Junction. At another junction, appropriately called Scranton, the line forks into two tracks that act as a runaround for the southbound trips back to the crew's home base at Pittston Yard and also for servicing industries on the switchback track. In video T148, we got to see the obscure operations of the Reading and Northern's Kaiser Valley branch and its switchback spur track. You might remember at that time, the switchback track was switched on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but you learned that schedule would change. What would also change is that big six axle power would become rare on the branch as rebuilt ex Norfolk Southern GP38 2s would come to dominate the line. One thing that I couldn't show you at the time was the junction where the switchback spur branches off from the Kaiser Valley track. Here you can see that spur branching off and down to the left of your screen. GP38-2 number 2011 is an ex-Norfolk Southern High Hood that was purchased from NS during its GP38-2 purge of 2017. RNN has acquired a mini armada of the ex-Southern High Hoods and even some rebuilt Admiral cabs since 2017 and reconfigured all with low short hoods and gave some fresh green and yellow paint. The first three volunteers were numbered 2010, 2011, and 2012 with another three acquired a year or two later that were numbered 5672, 5603, and the third unit. I'm assuming that the second batch was renumbered 2013, 2014, and 2015. If I'm right, that means that a third wave of thoroughbred Jeeps was acquired as shown by the 2017 posing in the yard of Cressona, Pennsylvania. RNN's locomotive ambitions didn't stop with the four axles. Six axles in the form of SD40-2s, some also with Admiral cabs like the 3059 show here under the dreary gray skies of Tamaqua, have been showing up all over the system. My friend Frank videoed this mini battalion of XNSSDs and a lone SD50 in RNN paint on Penobscot Mountain just this past summer.
At present, there are two large customers on the backtrack, but if fortunes continue to smile on local rail fanning, we may be getting a third. The old Rosenstein Warehouse is a cold storage warehouse that, back in my truck driving days, I delivered to several times myself. Green bell peppers from the sunshine state of Florida. I remember it like it was yesterday. For years, the warehouse was in an operable but derelict state. But this summer, development has taken place and large swaths of land and trees have been cleared, exposing the rails that have been buried for decades. In these before and after photos, you can see how the small forest has been swept away by man's machinery and also where the junction of the spur and the backtrack once came together. I don't know if Rosenstein's cold storage will see rail service again, whether under its current name or a new owner, but I'll be keeping my eye on the development of this area. And speaking of development in the area, three years ago I talked about a spur and an accompanying grade crossing being rehabilitated a few miles down the line. I promised an update but never heard anything more about the progress that was being made. I finally got a chance to ask an RNN employee and I was told that they put two cars in there, this being at least two years ago, and that was that. Sadly, I've seen no activity or indication that the spur will be utilized anytime soon. Hopefully I'm wrong because one never knows. In the meanwhile, enjoy these photos taken on February 7, 2018 of the grade crossing construction taking place. While the RNA crew was doing their thing on the backtrack, a short distance away on the Sunbury Line, the Norfolk Southern's train 11Z was making its way south to Enola. In fact, the former Cayuga Junction that connected this line with the Kaiser Valley Branch is only about a half mile down the line. Today's 11Z had a now rare SD70 ACU in the mix.
The first prototype GP30 was built in 1961. It retained the turbocharged 16-cylinder 567 series engine of the GP20, uprated from 2,000 to 2,250 horsepower, and was initially known as the GP22, following EMD's short-lived tradition of linking the model name to the locomotive horsepower. After a number of design changes from this initial demonstrator, including the addition of several features that would be carried through to subsequent models, the name was changed to the GP30 and it entered regular production in 1962. The name change was partly a marketing response to competition from the 2400 horsepower Alco RS27 and the 2500 horsepower GEU 25B, both of which had a horsepower and a model name advantage, and both who were still in bed with each other at that time. The GP30 marked the first significant departure from the utilitarian car body design introduced by the GP7 and carried through to the GP20. The addition of an inertial air intake system behind the cab, along with a renewed emphasis on appearance, resulted in a restyled car body with a raised fairing extending from the cab roof to the middle of the long hood. With the inertial air intake occupying the front of the hood, the radiators were combined into a single section at the rear of the hood with two 48-inch fans flanking a single 36-inch fan. In combination with EMD's signature swing hanger Blomberg-style trucks, the car body of the GP30 makes it unlikely to be confused with anything else. Railroads that operated the GP30 were the Chesapeake and Ohio, the Burlington Route, the Chicago and Northwestern, the Denver and Rio Grande Western, the Great Northern, the Louisville and Nashville, the Milwaukee Road, the Pennsylvania, the Santa Fe, the Seaboard Airline, the Cotton Belt, the Sioux Line, the Southern, the Southern Pacific, and the Union Pacific. And last but not least, even the original Philadelphia and Reading embraced the muscular Jeep. And at least one of the former Reading GP30s had the Beeline service slogan on it if memory serves me proper. If you look hard enough, you can still find GP30s in service on short lines and tourist railroads all around America. Even the giant CSX uses GP30 car bodies as slug units, or at least it did before PSR. And with that, we round out part two of the old Reading Railroad and the new. What will part three encompass? Just you wait and see. For Trains 21, call me AC.